From the start of Putin's war with Ukraine, scholars and experts across the world have been debating what it represents. A far-right fascist type of action or far-left Stalinism. Similarities are obvious on both accounts. Putin thinks in Stalin's terms. He started the war under the banner of denazification of Ukraine. Translated from Russia's propaganda language, it means desocialization, the deformation of its social structure. As a nation, Ukrainians must be turned into a formless entity that would serve the interests of the state, just as the Soviet people did under Stalin. But Nazism is also present. As the Ukrainian philosopher Vladimir Yermonenko has put it, Putin's views on Ukraine look like inverted Nazism. Jews were for Nazis, the other, which wanted to be like you. Ukrainians are for Russians, like us, which now want to be the other, and therefore have to be exterminated as a major enemy par excellence, anti-Russia. Perhaps no single historical analogy can fully describe Putin's invasion, but from the very start it was based on totalitarian ideas. The totalitarian mechanism always works the same way. It looks for an enemy group of people in society, whether along social, racial, gender or other lines, and blames them for disrupting the nation from within. With Stalin it was the counter-revolutionaries. Hitler had the Jews, Putin has the Ukrainians. Even now, propaganda insists that Ukrainians are dividing the Russian people from within. Only the most naive people would believe that this is the process of becoming a political nation and the formation of a national culture. No, the entire purpose of this is purely the destruction of the Russian people. Destruction from within by dividing the nation and pitting those divisions against each other. In fact, nine months later, Putin has largely abandoned his story of the denazification of Ukraine. Now he's shelling Ukrainian energy infrastructure, plunging the country into darkness. The Kremlin is as clear as any hostage taker. Vladimir Zelensky can end the suffering of the Ukrainian people by meeting Putin's demands. In Ukraine, Putin now behaves like a terrorist, but his totalitarian ideas are still driving him forward. The more he is losing the war, the more he aims them inwards. In 2012, the Russian government has introduced the concept of a foreign agent, claiming that it is copying a similar American law. This is a special law initially used for disloyal human rights activists and journalists. For example, almost all my colleagues at TV Rain have been labeled as foreign agents. We have been put in the position of pariahs, personally. But when Nobel laureate Dmitry Muratov asked Putin about this law a year ago, Putin again said that it was being implemented just like in America. It is simple, he said. Money that comes from abroad should be identified as such. No big deal. Russian общество должно знать, что да, человек вот такую позицию формулирует. Так он относится к внутриполитическим процессам. Там еще каким еще. Но он получает деньги из за границы. Это право российского общества. По сути, у нас вот к этому все и сводится. Там ограничений никаких нет. No restrictions at all, said Putin. Now, fast forward to one year later. On December 1st, new laws on foreign agents are coming into force. Daria Korolenka, a lawyer from the independent media project Over the Info, explains what restrictions are being implemented. The civic organizations that had to submit their tax reports quarterly and not mark them would now have to submit three or four times more reports and mark everything they write as sourced by a foreign agent. They would also have to face various other restrictions and requirements. All the so-called foreign agents now have a huge amount of restrictions. They can't participate in elections, they can't participate in any kind of education of minors, distribute information in the media, and are banned from a whole range of other activities. So there are a lot of restrictions. You can't participate in elections, you can't teach, you can't participate in the insurance deposit system. It's a direct and blatant denial of civil rights. And this is the same logic in which the persecution of the Jews in the Third Reich developed. Yes, I know about Godwin's law. Don't bring up Hitler into discussion. But firstly, after Putin started the war, Godwin himself admitted he lost. Secondly, Russian foreign agent legislation bluntly duplicates Nazis' race laws, right down to the details. It's like they copied it. For example, foreign agents are now banned from holding positions in power and in military service, much like the National Socialists banned Jews from civil service in April 1933, just two months after they came to power. 
they used the special law for the restoration of the professional civil service, which applied not only to Jews, but also, for example, to members of the Communist Party and other untrustworthy elements. And just as the Nazis began to persecute homosexuals when they came to power, the Kremlin is tightening the so-called gay propaganda law. In response to the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who urged via Twitter to not pass this homophobic legislation, the members of the Russian parliament voted unanimously. Покажите, пожалуйста, результат. За 397, против нет, воздержавшихся нет. Коллеги, поздравляем. А господину госсекретарю Блинкину это... Лучший ответ. Не надо нам навязывать чуждые ценности. Вы свои разрушили? Посмотрим, чем это все закончится. Но однозначно печально, потому что это садом по-другому не скажешь. И Соединенные Штаты Америки стали центром этого садома в мире. And state propagandists have been reinforcing the necessity of this law with reports from the World Cup in Qatar, declaring that the liberal West is trying to push gender diversity and sexual freedom on them too, as if Russia is Qatar. Whether the World Cup should be held in a place where same-sex relations are punishable by prison is a separate question. But Russia is not an Islamic country. It has no Sharia law. Russia is historically part of Europe. Yes, it is more conservative than the Netherlands or Norway, but it does not live inside the strictest religious prohibitions. This is an objective reality. According to polls, 20 years ago, in 2003, when asked about their attitude towards homosexuals, 45% answered they had no problem with it. By February 2013, this number had dropped to 23%, largely as a result of state propaganda. In 2005, only 35% of Russians opposed gay rights. 16 years later, it was almost twice as much already. Putin tells us that Russia is a unique civilization. But the truth is that homophobia is not a traditional attitude in Russia. It was imposed by the Kremlin. And now for the government, it is a symbol of breaking with the West. Otherwise, it is unclear why Putin started his bloody war. This is how Putin phrased it at a recent meeting with the mothers of the mobilized. На рубеже 2000-х, 90-х годов нам казалось, что все будет хорошо, а оказалось, что это совсем не так. И больше того, мы начали как бы жить и играть на какой-то чужой поляне. И с восторгом придавались тому, что нами пытаются управлять. И в конечном итоге те, кто пытался нами управлять, в общем-то и целом, благодаря их усилиям мы оказались в той ситуации, в том числе и вот на, в зоне специальной военной операции. Ведь же они до этого довели. And this is exactly the same lines of logic down which the persecution of gay people in Nazi Germany developed. For Hitler, the free, liberal, cosmopolitan times of the Weimar Republic were his German 90s, when the great Iranian civilization began to play on an alien playing field, dancing to someone else's tune. In Russia, the first law banning gay propaganda appeared in 2013, at the same time as the first law on foreign agents. Back then, it banned propaganda targeting children. Now, it has been extended to everyone. The Nazis did not immediately put gay people in concentration camps either. They also started with shielding children from homosexual propaganda and closing gay clubs. But in 1937, Himmler stated that this plague could not be present in SS as homosexuality was detrimental to the birth rate and threatened Germany with a demographic catastrophe, an argument Putin would also use. Exactly as the initial anti-gay legislation, Putin needs this new, updated version primarily for PR purposes, to cover up his defeat in Ukraine. It is not he who has attacked Ukraine. It is the West who is destroying Russia from within with its liberal values. As experts point out, the new bans are virtually the same as the old ones. Some movies might be banned, some books too. Streaming platforms might remove LGBTQ content from their platforms. But most importantly, the nation is being pointed at the internal enemy. A new tool for oppression and settling scores will be at display. There will be more violence, says Gulia Sultanova, organizer of the Bokobok LGBTQ festival. Before, people who were violated were afraid to go to the police. 
That is, they did not feel confident and entitled to ask for protection from the so-called law enforcement officers then. Even more so now, in principle, any crimes against LGBTQ people can be justified, not necessarily sexual violence, but any kind of attack. LGBTQ people have become so vulnerable that anyone could write a complaint that threatens to send an LGBTQ person to jail for propaganda. Because no one understands what propaganda exactly is. There is no such thing as LGBT propaganda. It's just some fiction. It's simulacra. It's all bullshit. The new law is not even in effect yet, but this is exactly what is beginning to happen. LGBTQ people... Mm -hmm. The new law is not even in effect yet, but this is exactly what is beginning to happen. LGBTQ people are already being harassed in Telegram feeds, across social media. Why is there a transgender person sitting on this expert panel? Who let him in? Gays need medical treatment, says a member of Russian parliament. Putin is using homophobia for political purposes, but the truth is that he is not in control anymore. He has lost the war and has been swept up in the current. He is trying to survive by covering himself with repressive legislation and pointing society at a supposed internal enemy. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow, neither Putin nor his officials. And at the same time, Russia is turning into a fascist state, just like Germany in the 1930s.